the heck? Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. <laughs> they are obviously robbers. Our name's Nash Skulkin. Our occupation is a baddie, a professional baddie. You're openly admitting it in front of the court. And then Jingo Skulkin, the occupation's the same as him. The bias cracks in Scotland, Yard Inspector. And that's right, uh, we're what they call. The three Skulkin brothers! What? <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? Don't lump me with you lot. Oh, God, blind me, that's cool. Don't you know what we're going through? And our older brother lost contact with him. We have uh, so he's going every shady corner of the capital. Wait, your brothers? Your actual brothers? Uh, the last night we came across you, this very spit of a bloke, ain't that right, Wingo? Uh, he is, Natch, he is, uh, the very spit of him. So we decided, uh, and then, uh, what we was gonna do, we was gonna call ya. A big brof Soki. No, then, he's not their actual brother, I don't think. <laughs> Come on, leave it out, you two. Sauki's Gauken? And that's before he's run out of chips. Well then, uh, Inspector... Oh god. Well then, Inspector Sauki Gregson... <laughs> Sauki Gregson. Uh, begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. Uh, what I would like to know, Inspector, is what are you doing in the witness stand? The Skalkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. Hmm, thieves are they? These three? Wait. <laughs> no, my lord. Begging your pardon, but please don't lump me in with this lot. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with intent to burgle. And in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. By Jove, you mean to say, what an extraordinary coincidence. It is. Indeed, my lord. While attempting to burglarize the pawnbrokery, they witnessed its proprietor's murder. Order! Order! The various trespasses of these brothers is not a subject of today's proceedings, though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. Uh, with your lordship's permission, I'd like to remain at the stand to keep these gents on a straight and narrow. Of course, Inspector, skeptical as I am about the cali I am about the caliber of these witnesses, I will permit them to take your stand. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you will now testify before the court. Describe the events of the night in question and what exactly you saw. Abby do Cause the thousands never skulking. What? Doesn't even make sense. Get out of it. Oh, we were talking down Baker Street in the small hour and the gas store was a jar, you say? It was like some kind of sign back to us to go in it was. Yeah, but once we got inside, I recall blind me love me with all the gunshot from the back room. Yeah, and we went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. Oh, they never done nothing, governor. I never took nothing. Oh, we just left after that nice and quiet. Okay. Hmm, a terrible coincidence it would seem. At a precise moment, these miscreants entered the property and even more sinister crime was afoot. The witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. The door providing access to the storeroom from the main shop was indeed locked from the inside, and within only the victim and the accused were found. 
Hmm, I must say, it does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Still, the defense may cross-examine the witnesses now, of course. Counsel, if you please. C counsel? Uh, uh, yes. Oh, what's the matter, Runa? Sorry, I, I I was just stunned into silence for a minute by the blatant lies being told by that pair in the stand. I know that it's all nonsense because I saw it with my own eyes. I just have to expose their testimony for the pack of lies it is. Wait, I didn't really pay attention. What was the lie? Okay. Yeah, the door was a jar. I mean, it could be a jar, right? Back the for us to go in, right. You heard a gunshot. I mean, oh, I don't see the lie. Is it that obvious? <laughs> um. Is it really that ob Was the door really ajar, though? So, uh, press? Hold it! The front door of Windy Banks was ajar, you say? What time of night was this? Uh, much of you about one, right, Red Wall? Oh, yeah, I'd say so. Alright, Salky! Uh, how would I know? That the place would have been shut at one in the morning, just like every other shop in town. Oh, well, what's pitch black and shadow true? Ain't that right, Ringo? Yeah, I'm not so sure, man. I seem to remember a little light burning inside. What about you, Saki, me old mucker? Leave me alone. <laughs> there definitely was a small lamp burning inside. That's what alerted us to the situation in the first place. And when these gentlemen ventured into the open establishment, the accused Miss Gina Lestrade already had the muzzle of a gun trained to trained on the unfortunate victim. Objection! That is pure conjecture. Hmm. <sighs> Perhaps, but it changes nothing. And these brothers inadvertently wandered into the middle of a cold-blooded murder simply because they found a door of the victim's establishment open and ventured inside. Am I dead, what happened? Hmm. You heard a gunshot from the back room. A gunshot, you say? Just the one. Are you sure about that? You're yeah, just the one, Governor. I can swear to that. It was that. It was. Uh, ain't that right, bruv? The firearm used belong to the victim himself. Yes, Mr. Windybank always used to leave his gun lying around on the counter. Right, right I remember. When we examined it, we found the revolver was completely out of rounds. That makes sense. Mr. Windybank always used to say he only ever kept the single bullet loaded. That's true. I remember him saying that as well. So we can say with considerable certainty that only a single round was discharged from the firearm used as a murder weapon. Yes, my lord, we can. And I should remind the court that the firearm in question was discovered in the hand of the accused. Hmm. Wonderful. The door was locked from the inside. You never took nothing. You just left. Yeah, somehow they did not take anything. They just left. Hold it! Do you mean the door between the main shop and the storeroom? If 
my learned friend is having difficulty grasping the situation. Perhaps a drawing would help. Okay, I was asking the witnesses, not you. Excluding the shop's entrance from the street, there is only one other door. That of the storeroom. Goes the Martian, only a little oil that burning, not much to say, boy. And the door was hidden behind the curtain and all. That's right. When we arrived, the door was mostly obscured by the curtain. Tell me, why exactly did you try to open that door? Eh? Any normal petty thief would run at the sound of a gunshot, I should think. Oh, wow, oh, oh, you're sort of memorable. Uh, well, uh, yeah. I suppose you'd have to say that we ain't normal, eh? Broadly speaking, humans respond in one of two ways on hearing a gunshot or scream. The timid flee, gripped by fear, or the courageous investigate to see if they might help. These gentlemen are of the latter inclination. My learned Nipponese friend, it would seem, is of the former. <laughs> Alright, well, somehow I just proved that I was a coward that night. Uh, thank you, Council. Uh, so I believe we all understand that the door was locked and could not be opened. Proceed. Never done nothing. Let me look at the evidence. What kind of evidence do we have? Blood samples. Blood samples. There's one unknown blood. Oh, did we see the notes? I don't believe we have, but... <laughs> it's not much information, is it? Don't actually have much. Hold it! You didn't do or take anything, is that your story? Well, it was bad as soon as I wanted. It was nice, it was. I didn't even have time to pull me dukes out me lucky Lu Lucy Lockets. What are they talking about? So with no time to take your hands out of your pockets, you just left, nice and quietly, you say? Uh, that's right, governor. Nothing. We ate uh, more than violence. Peace of the nibblers. We are not bloodthirst. Uh, we are that, we are. They might even pull me dukes out me, Lu Lucy Lockets. Oh, the pockets are called Lucy Lockets? Okay. Dukes are your hands. <laughs> so you'd clearly like us to believe. Uh, come again? Uh, as you fled from the pawnbrokers that night. Did you not run into anyone else? Uh, oh yeah, the gunshot that harmed uh, Sholmes. And did you not fire a gun at that person? <laughs> Is it allowed if they fight a gun, you say? <laughs> ah! Blam, Gumra! You ain't telling us it was you in the doorway! It was. Oh, I had a bleeding aura. Oh, didn't you mention that before? What? <laughs> you were armed with a gun. And you, as you fled the scene, you fired that gun at London's greatest detective, Herlock Sholmes. They shot the great Mr. Sholmes? I did hear that actually. There was a rumor. Uh, he's being rushed to the hospital. Great Sholmes? That's beyond the pill. Under night in question, this pair were arrested by the police within minutes of the discovery of the crime scene. Their suspicious countenance rapidly gave them away. <laughs> and when searched, a firearm was indeed found in their possession. Furthermore, the barrel shows signs of a shot having been fired from it. The prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm recovered from these brothers. 
And yet they are here as witnesses. How unreliable are they as witnesses? What the heck? Yes, indeed. Remnants of powder around the muzzle, as you say, Council. The court will hold this weapon as evidence. Hmm. A single round was fired. Now, my learned Nibonese friend. Yes? Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. Would be nice if you gave me a glass of wine as well. This is also a revolver. It's kind of longer than the other one, but a revolver nonetheless. So, there's ammunition still loaded in five of this revolver's six cylinders. Yes, which tells us that only a single shot has been fired from it. Exactly. The bullet that hit Hurley, in fact, isn't it? Yes, it happened almost as soon as we'd walked in through Windybank's door. I'll make those brothers pay! Oh yes, there are the tell-tale tell, tell signs of spent powder on this gun and a single bullet missing from the cylinder. But the prosecution demands evidence that it was fired at the scene of the crime under scrutiny in this trial. Huh? Objection! What? <laughs> Didn't understand that. Well, I don't need evidence. What? Oh, he demands evidence that it was fired at the scene of the crime. Hmm. And me saying, I don't need evidence, that is not good enough. Because I was there. Objection! However, the rest of us in this courtroom were not. If the defense fails to provide evidence in support of its rash claim, we shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Evidence that these two fired that gun before they left Windy Banks that night? The court admits that all claims are affirmed with clear proof. What evidence shows that these witnesses unload the, uh, unloaded a firearm in the pawnbroker's shop that night? Um. Uh, um, I mean, Sholmes was shot, and it can't be using Windy Bank's gun. Uh, what do I present here? I don't know. <coughs> what does the game want from me? I don't know. Well, fact is, two people have been shot using two bullets. And there only ever was one bullet in this gun. So it has to be another gun. I mean... Am I wrong? Single, single bullet wound. No other visible signs of trauma. Huh? <laughs> I don't get it. I'm just gonna present this gun. Take that! The evidence is this. <laughs> okay, this is wrong. Uh -oh. You perplex me, Kozu, by looking so pleased. Ah. My learned friend has a knack for it, my lord. It seems to presenting nothing as though it was something. Is a favorite trick of the Nipponese conjurer. Oh my god! Uh, shame on me. 
Well, I think it takes a certain genius to give such a completely wrong answer, personally. The kind of genius I could really do without. Huh? The court demands... Evidence. Uh-huh. Eh? Eh? Um, what evidence shows that these witnesses unloaded a firearm in a pawnbrokery's shop that night? I mean, the fact that Sholmes is in the hospital? But I don't have that as evidence. The blood that we found outside could be proof. I mean, we do, we did find some blood outside of the storeroom on the calendar. That could be proof, right? Take that! The evidence is in this portfolio. What? What on earth have you there, Council? During the course of our investigations, we discovered a number of bloodstains. Not trusting the police to do the job they're trained to do. How arrogant of you. You Nipponese. Well, well, anyway, we analyzed all the blood samples we found and recorded the results in this portfolio. I mean, <laughs> if only police, uh, police analysis of the crime scene were in my evidence bag. You claim to have the evidence the court is demanding therein. Yes, my lord. No more dallying then, Council. Present the pertinent evidence at once. What do you have in your portfolio that proves these witnesses unloaded a firearm at the scene? Well, this one. Thank you, game. <laughs> Take that! What is that? Explain. It's a photographic print taken at Windy Bank's pawn brokery on the day of the incident. From the scene of the crime, is it? Is that a bullet hole? And if my eyes do not deceive me, it appears the bullet is still lodged there. Oh yeah, there's a bullet there. Oh god, I didn't even notice that. Yes, as your lordship noticed, the bullet pierced Mr. Windybank's calendar. The date shown being the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. The incident occurred at one hour after midnight. But this indicates that a separate shot had been fired sometime after the calendar had been set to the 16th. That's right, and while it isn't irre irrefutable, the defense believes this is credible evidence that the witnesses did fire a round from their gun in the pawnbrokers that night. Oh, uh, yeah. Order! How does the prosecution stand, Lord Van Zeeks? If that is the direction my learned friend wishes to take, the prosecution has no objection. What? <laughs> but you forgive me for flinging my hallowed chalice aside in disgust at the repugnancy it exposes. Yes, on the night in question, these brothers entered the pawnbrokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claim to be, open fire on the new arrivals before fleeing back onto the street. Eh? Eh? you, you're gonna land us in the soup! Oh, well, you weren't gonna get us into them details! Uh, tell them, Sargate, tell them, set the cook straight! I have nothing to add. So he knew, did he? Van Zeeks knew that testimony would almost certainly expose the extent of their crimes. It would seem now 
that I owe my learned Nepponese friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. Uh, to what fact do you refer, Lord Von Zeeks? As has been established, at the point of their arrest, a single shot had been fired from the brother's gun. However, if that shot found its target in Mr. Shops, then clearly these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shooting of the proprietor and victim. That's not entirely true. They could have taken the other gun and shot Windy Bank. Uh. In other words, these two men have no material connection to the murder of Mr. Windy Bank at all. But that's not true! What? So that's it. We didn't have nothing to do with it. We didn't mean, we didn't mean, that's what I reckon. Your crimes include unlawful entry, intent to steal, perjury, and let us not forget, attempted murder. Quite a kind of okay, fellas. Uh, we in it for now, brother. Now then. Let us take a moment to consider the aforementioned great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. It would seem the man patronized the pawnbrokers in question somewhat irregularly. Where is he going with this? Mr. Sholmes appears to take pleasure in tinkering with eccentric machinery. Eccentric? That's who? Not me, don't give me that look. He installed a pair of machines like this one in the victim's shop. Oh, that's one of Holly's red-handed recorders. Uh, what is that, Hauzo? It has the appearance of a photographic contraption. As your lordship has surmised, it is indeed a camera attached to a small timing device. Every half an hour, it automatically photographs the interior of the establishment. The idea being that if a thief were to break into the shop, he would be caught red-handed. Hmm. The prosecution has obtained the photographs taken by the device on the night in question. Holy crap, that's a lot of photos. Eight thirty PM. Nine PM. Why is this relevant? <laughs> As the court will observe, copious identical prints are produced in a quite desultory fashion. Desultory? What does that even mean? Hmm, rather prodigious, I feel. In fact, there are two such devices in the victim's shop, my lord. If I may refer the court to the plan of the premises, their respective positions are here and here. You say these cameras produce a print every half hour? I'm afraid to... Uh, I fail to see how that would help if the anticipated thief conducted his activities in one of the many 30-minute intervals. <laughs> true. True point. One can only pray that a would-be criminal lingers, my lord. Hmm. On a night in question, the witnesses currently in the stand were not caught on camera. <laughs> That's a better fire truck, eh, bro? Really like lots of skulking. Witnesses, at what time did your trespassing begin? Eh, hey, must have been just walked one, right, bro? Uh, must have been, I must have been. Yeah, I just got one. In which case, minutes before these brothers entered the establishment. What scene might we expect to see within the shop? <coughs> oh. Oh, I need to drink some water. <coughs> <coughs> oh god. Oh. <coughs> Let us examine the evidence. Oh. What? Good lord. What? Gina, what? 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 It is the defendant. Miss Gina Lestrade. 
What the? As the court can clearly see. Nick hears his pictured gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. No doubt coercing the proprietor to open the door to his store. A quiet, uh, one could only too easily imagine the events that unfolded. The court will take this photographic print as evidence, if you please, counsel. Oh my god, this is bad. This is really, really bad. <laughs> Okay, maybe she forced Mr. Windybank to open the door. Because it would make sense that he wouldn't do it for her. Oh my god, this looks really bad on you, Gina. <laughs> I have nothing to say. I, I don't believe it, Jenny. In short... The accused is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Windybank. Ah! I say, him, my lord. Uh, who was that? Oh. Well, I know if I might put in a word at this point. Go ahead, Mr. Foreman. I took a body bullet to the knee of the Battle of May 1, 1880, don't you know? <laughs> yes, his medal. Decorated for it and all that, but forced to retire from service, sadly. Mm, of course, a medal can never outshine the exploits of chaps like us on the battlefield. Yes, Mr. Foreman, and uh, what exactly is your point? I carried on a battle after retirement, you see. The battle of daily life, if you like. And here I am now, leading the small squadron. Six men, all good and true. And women? And we'll all go down together, you mark my words, on for all and all for one. What is he saying? Is he saying they all say the defendant is guilty? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached agreement, have they? Is that what we are to understand? Well, Mr. Foreman, is that correct? In a manner of speaking, yes. It is the Gary Depp Squadron's position, sir. What? No, it's too soon to make a judgment. Establish a court for the court, man, on the double. His lordship insists on promptitude at all times, and that goes for making decisions, too. I think you'll find the truth as, as clear as day now. I could reach out and touch it. What is that contraption on your face? I wouldn't have left it in there. I just wouldn't. But in all honesty, I can't actually remember. <laughs> what is he going on about? Left what in there? Like, your ring? <laughs> in in where? The situation clear. Stop. No room for doubt. Stop. Truth is now undeniable. Stop. Why are you... Why are you <laughs> typing using Morse code? What happened to your typewriter? I am very sorry. Sorry for brothers. Uh, they are lucky. What? <laughs> what was that? Very well. I now call upon each member of the jury to state his or her leaning in this matter. Announce your verdicts. Guilty. 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 Well, pff. that was fast. It does indeed appear that the jury is unanimous in its leaning already. That photograph, it must be the definitive evidence that Gregson mentioned. But Jenny didn't shoot him. No, of course not. My lord. The defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination. And very well, the court grants permission. So, you refuse to admit defeat again. How unsurprising. 
We shall proceed immediately with the summation examination. Mr. Foreman, are all members of the jury ready? Absolutely, sir. Always ready for action, my chaps. Very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. All the evidence clearly points the finger of guilt at this young pickpocket Yen. As a housemate, I should like to see all filthy eyesores promptly and vigorously in eliminated. I think you'll find that if you look at that photograph in stereo, the truth will just pop out. Wait, what? Oh! <laughs> that, is a, that is a portable stereoscope that you have, is that it? You look so silly with it. If I have left it in there, I should I should think there'll be repercussions by now. <laughs> what, is, what is he talking about? Is he talking about Windy Bank? Don't mind me, stop. A lower radio transmission of verdict to follow. Stop. In Motherland, we say never judge by clothes, judge by head. I am convinced brothers are innocent. Brothers are innocent? What brothers? You mean the bl burglar brothers? Or... What are you talking about? <sighs> hmm. uh, the circumstances of the crime and the evidence do indeed implicate the defendant rather comprehensively. The storeroom locked from the inside, in which the victim and the accused were discovered alone. And in the accused's hand, the fatal re re revolver, the firing of which was heard by the witnesses. Not to mention this print! Taken from the chap who seen action on the battlefield, that young girl's on the verge of pulling the body trigger! Regina knows how to handle a gun, really? Thanks a lot, Mr. Sholmes. Oh dear, all these cameras were supposed to help, not hinder. Can we see all the other photographic prints of the cameras? I'm afraid you think you have an uphill struggle ahead of you. But Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windybank. Which means there's more to this situation that we've yet to see. Agreed. Wait, did you just read my mind? <laughs> She did! I didn't say these things out loud, she just read my mind. You have the floor, Council. Proceed with the summation examination. I mean, what the f heck is up with all these explanations or reasonings? This doesn't say anything, and this doesn't say anything, this also does not say anything. Hold it! Um, what exactly have you been muttering about all this time, sir? You keep talking about having left something somewhere or something like that. Oh, uh, so sorry! Uh, as you can probably tell, I am a surgeon! A surgeon? That totally passed me by. Uh, of course, people conducting surgery in this country aren't considered to be doctors, oh no! Uh, even though me and my kind are at the forefront of medical science, the real brains in the field. So, uh, what is it that you think you've left behind? Somewhere. Oh well, that's a uh, little embarrassing to be honest. Uh, you see, I was operating on someone yesterday, standard thing, went in through the abdomen. <gasps> Sholmes? Uh, but when I'd finished the procedure, I, uh, well, I couldn't find my scalpel. Scalp... No. S uh, scalpel. Anywhere. What? Did he... Surely not. Exactly, surely not. You say to yourself, don't you? Worrying, isn't it? And that's what's been troubling me this whole time. Oh no, what? No way. 
the scapel. You left the scapel in Mr. Sholmes. <laughs> what? That's crazy. I mean, the thing is sharp. It can cause internal organ damage, bleeding, stuff like that. Yeah, could I really have left my scapel inside the fellow's belly? No, no, of course I couldn't. So, uh, there you have it. Uh, like I said, a little embarrassing, really. A little embar- Okay. That's one way of putting it. The other is manslaughter. <laughs> That's exactly my concern. And seeing as this case appears to be all but sewn up, I need to focus on trying to remember where exactly what I've sewn up elsewhere. No, I'm sure I made sure everything was back as it should be. Oh, well, as sure as you can be without being sure. I'm sure you need to be more sure. Hmm. And who are you? Hold it! Uh, please tell me you're not a villain Bolshevik. <laughs> the Russian revolutionary. Re revolutionary? Da, I believe that is such a rumor. It's just a rumor? As you see, I have unfortunate uh, appearance. Uh, I look like a vicious criminal. <laughs> Your words, not mine. I, I just wanted to point that out. A people call me revolutionary, a murderer, autocrat. And uh, which glove fits? A good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take the bus to Crystal Tower, please. <laughs> right, that didn't sound staged at all. You forgive me for having my doubts. I to be treated like vicious criminal all the time. It is very painful. People do not realize. Uh, so I have much sympathy for those brothers. Uh, people say they are criminals only because of how they look. The Skulking Brothers? Da, maybe they went inside pawnbroker's shop. Uh, but they have done nothing wrong. Uh, that is all what I want to say. The Skulking Brothers did nothing wrong that night? Alright, well, first of all, that's one not so little misunderstanding I need to clear up straight away. Tell me something, Iris. Hmm? Uh, what is it, Runo? The jurors are chosen at random from the inhabitants of London Town, aren't they? Yes, that's amazing, isn't it? In that case, how is it that there's a Russian tourist sitting among them who looks for all the world like a revolutionary? I wish I knew. <laughs> yeah, why are we asking Iris? If I can't change the minds of more than half of these six jurors, the trial will be over. Oh, but we know that Jenny would never shoot anyone. Yes, yeah, so we need to find contradictions in what these jurors are saying and pit them against each other. I must be ready to go to whatever lengths I have to, to convince them of Gina's innocence. <laughs>